Hey, you guys, welcome to Coin Nation. I'm Preston. And to my OG citizens, welcome back. And if you're new here, I really appreciate you stopping by. Listen, it's amazing to me how early we are when you think about how groundbreaking the Internet Computer Protocol is in this space. It's literally a gold mine of innovation and technology. And it can be likened to an upgrade of the modern Web2 stack. So join me today as we explore the differences between developing on Amazon Web Services and ICP. And listen, you may be surprised at how wide the gap is between the two. All right, real quick, don't forget to check Coin Nation out on Open Chat. You can check us out at chat.coinnation.io. I've got that real simple URL for you. We're almost at 900 members, growing strong every day. About three weeks we've been in existence, so lots of good conversation prizes and giveaways, things of that nature, and just staying informed with what's going on with Coin Nation as a valuable citizen that you are. Also, check me out on X, always offering up my opinions and my advice and insight and uh, would love to have a follow from you. And I appreciate your support. Lastly, the jerseys are selling like hotcakes. So you can check that out at shop.coinnation.io. Right now, there's just one product, but I plan on expanding that to add all kinds of ICP merch for the eight year gang, for the ICP fam, and for just people that like the technology. If this sounds interesting, you go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and let's get into it. All right, citizens, so I think this will be a fun one because there's such a clear contrast between ICP and AWS. It's like black and white, hot and cold and light and dark so let's go ahead and dig into this icp is the first of its kind generation 3 blockchain aws is the first modern public cloud platform so the first thing we're going to talk about is container management containers are a way of packaging your application in a way that is portable scalable and consistent across all environments this is a very common way to build software in the web 2 space just know that these containers are very essential to running a scalable and portable web application in the web 2 space and amazon's approach is to leverage one of their services called eks to manage docker containers handle orchestration and scaling and while it's a powerful tool you still need to manage things like virtual machines clusters and nodes and it adds a layer of complexity to the situation and at the end of the day your app remains tied to aws central infrastructure and you know in pricing so icp's approach on the other hand is there's no need for containers instead you deploy your app as a canister which handles both compute and storage and canisters automatically scale based on demand eliminating the need to manage servers or containers and everything runs on a decentralized network so there's no central provider to rely on so you know and final thing here is basically it, it makes container management obsolete by leveraging these canisters which drastically simplify app deployment and the scaling and developers can focus on building instead of infrastructure. You'll find that that's a common thing throughout this entire video that, you know, with the architecture of ICP, the convenience, simplicity, and more modern Web3 way of doing things allows you to focus more on what did you come here to build and less about configuring this and make sure that this is working properly and everything's about restoring the focus back onto what I'm building to provide value to my intended demographic. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next issue here. So every application needs to store files one way or another. And the way that Amazon handles this in terms of, you know, where to store your applications data is, you know, Amazon has a service called the simple storage service. And this is also a pretty scalable and reliable storage option, but it's centralized. Again, we're back to talking about the same issue. 
your data lives on AWS's servers and you need to configure things like controls, backups, encryption, and as your app grows, storage costs can quickly increase. You are at the mercy of AWS's pricing tiers and policies. With ICP's approach, the storage is a part of the canister itself using stable memory. This means your app's data is stored and managed directly on chain. You don't need to worry about external storage solutions, access controls, or backups. So a lot less configuration. Everything's decentralized, meaning your data is globally available and secure by default. So, I mean, it's night and day, literally night and day. So let's move on to database storage. And this is very similar because we're talking about a, a new paradigm of software development. So the notion of databases is completely challenged by the Internet Computer Protocol. However, you still are going to need to deal with structured data. And that, that's where databases come into play in the Web2 space. So a database is where structured data like user profiles, transactions and, and things of that nature are stored. And they're essential for all modern applications. AWS's approach is to use Amazon's RDS service and it's a managed database solution. It supports various relational databases like Postgres and MySQL, but you still need to manage the connection, performance, the scaling, and RDS is powerful, but it adds complexity to the architecture. And as your app grows, so do the costs and maintenance requirements. On ICP, databases are built into the application itself via, you guessed it, canisters. The stable memory within the canisters allow you to store structured data as well without needing a separate database layer like RDS. Everything stored directly on chain, simplifying your architecture and then reducing the number of moving parts. That's a big thing. It's kind of like when you go from a internal combustion engine based vehicle to an electric vehicle. One of the first things that you notice when you have an electric vehicle is I don't have to worry about oil changes. I don't have to worry about servicing the engine. I don't have to worry about did my transmission go. The only thing, because I own an electric vehicle, the only thing I find myself wondering about is, is it time to replace the brakes and rotors? That's about the only thing. I'll come back to you in three years to tell you if that's still the case. <laughs> All right, moving right along, we got API management. And you'll start to see as we go through these sections, it's the same story from beginning to end. The complexities are reduced, the dependencies are completely eliminated, and the centralized services are no longer needed, right? So API management allows your app to expose its functionality so other services or users can interact with it over the web. On AWS, you have API Gateway that exposes and manages APIs. API Gateway handles scaling and security for your APIs, but it adds complexity requiring configuration monitoring. It's a useful tool, but it's another service you need to manage and pay for separately. On ICP, canisters come with built-in HTTP endpoints, meaning you don't need a separate API management tool. Canisters can handle HTTP requests natively, allowing you to directly expose your application's API on chain without the need for extra services. You see the reoccurring theme here? And, and it all comes back to this amazing alien piece of technology called the canister. So let's move right along to the identity management. So what is this? This is authentication that verifies who users are and manages their access to your app's features. AWS's approach offers Cognito for handling authentication. And while Cognito supports things like social logins and multi-factor authentication requires a significant setup and management. You also have to trust AWS with your user data, which adds another layer of centralization. On ICP, authentication is managed through the Internet Identity, which is a decentralized service, and it doesn't require users to create multiple accounts. It's secure, simple, and fully on chain, meaning developers don't have to manage sensitive user data themselves. Users have more control over their digital identities. So let's move right along to the next component involved with 
modern web application is application monitoring right so we need to be able to figure out is my application healthy and what is my application saying to me i need some visibility into what is going on within my application so monitoring involves tracking your application's performance and health through logs and metrics and aws uses a service called cloudwatch for doing this and it allows you to capture the logs and metrics across your app's services it's a powerful tool but it adds complexity and cost as you need to configure it for each service and manage the logs and as your app grows so do the expenses for your cloud watch usage on icp side canisters come with built-in logging making monitoring a lot easier you don't need a separate service like cloud watch because the logs are automatically generated and stored within the canister itself it's decentralized and there's no additional cost for keeping track of your apps help somebody say icp for the win icp for the win and now let's talk security so Obviously, you know, every app needs to be protected from outside malicious actors. So security ensures your app is protected from attacks such as DDoS attacks, and it keeps your users data safe. With AWS, it leverages the web application firewall to protect your app from attacks. And while WAF is robust, it requires configuration and constant management. Plus, there's an additional cost to maintaining security, especially as your app grows icp's approach icp security is built into the protocol canisters run in isolated environments on a decentralized network providing automatic protections against many of the common attacks there's no need to configure a separate firewall because the decentralized nature of icp inherently protects your app so at the end of the day ICP offers a built-in decentralized security, making it easier for developers to focus on building their apps without worrying about complex configurations. This aligns with the Web3 ideology. Okay, so lastly, the, the last component we're going to talk about of modern web application development is networking. This can get insanely complex when leveraging the public cloud and uh, basically networking ensures your app can communicate internally between services and externally with users over the internet. AWS's approach leverages VPC, which stands for Virtual Private Cloud, and also Route 53 for DNS management. These tools are powerful, but they require setup configuration, ongoing management, plus they come with additional costs for data transfer and DNS routing regarding icp the networking is literally on chain you don't need to configure separate networking services or dns routing everything happens automatically as a part of the decentralized network traffic is routed securely and efficiently without the need for virtual networks and additional services on chain through icp it removes the need for complex network configurations like VPCs and DNS services. It's an effortless, decentralized approach that's perfect for developers looking to simplify their architecture and embrace the future of Web3. Beautiful piece of alien technology. So, you know, as you can see, ICP provides a radically different and more streamlined approach to building applications and it removes the complexities, the costs, the centralization issues that come along with traditional cloud platforms like AWS. When it comes to ICP, you get automatic scaling, built-in security, and decentralized infrastructure all while freeing up more time to focus on innovation. So for developers, this is what Web3 is all about removing the unnecessary layers of management and offering more freedom to build scalable, trustless applications. If you're looking to move beyond the limits of Web2 and embrace the future, ICP is the perfect place to start. All right, that's all I got for you today. Citizens, I appreciate your support for the channel and I hope you were able to extract some value from today's content. Today's scripture comes from Exodus 14:14, 14, 14, where it says, the Lord will fight for you. All you have to do is keep still. That's all you have to do. He's got you covered.
And I want you to go at peace, spread those positive vibes to your community, and until the next episode, citizens, peace. Peace.